There's quite a lot of features that previous Assassin's Creed games once had, but often for some unexplained reason, Ubisoft just decided to completely stop adding these features into Assassin's Creed. Who knows, maybe in future Assassin's Creed games, some of the features in this video will make a return. Anyway, I've gathered 10 features that I would like to see return in Assassin's Creed. If you have any features that I've not mentioned in this video that you'd like to see return, just drop it down in the comments below. I'm actually quite interested to know what you think. Anyway, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Let's kick things off by discussing a feature that I genuinely loved in the older games, and that's the concept of Assassin Recruits. The last time we saw this feature was way back in Assassin's Creed 3, but for me, it reached its pinnacle of perfection in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. The idea of stumbling upon a potential assassin on the street and then recruiting them into your brotherhood was an absolute blast. It not only provided a substantial amount of engaging content, but it was also incredibly enjoyable. I was a big fan of the recruitment management system, where you could send your recruits on missions to gain experience and make them even more tankier. However, you would need to be careful when sending them on missions because there would be some missions that were too challenging and could result in some pretty unfortunate casualties. Then there was the experience of employing these recruits in actual combat. All you had to do was approach a group of enemies, summon your assassins, and witness them easily dispatch each enemy one by one whether it was raining arrows from a distance or swiftly performing some assassinations up close. The assassin recruits kind of came back in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but not really. It was pretty much a perk called Call to Arms, where you'd call upon a lieutenant to fight alongside you. It was okay, I guess, but it was pretty forgettable. I do remember Demos being a very overpowered lieutenant in Odyssey, but it was definitely not the same as assassin recruits. Of course, it's pretty much confirmed that Mirage will not have any assassin recruits, which is understandable considering it was intended to be a Valhalla DLC. So yeah, assassin recruits are a feature for me that I would definitely love to see return to Assassin's Creed. Now this next feature that I believe should return is more of an opinion based one for myself, and those are the Helix Rifts that we see in Unity and Syndicate. Now I don't know about you, but I actually had a lot of fun with these, especially in Unity going through each Helix Rift and experiencing what was on the other side. The idea of being able to somewhat explore a certain time period is quite fascinating to me. Of course in the world of the Animus, Abstergo is messing with the code, causing it to go haywire and making the player break free from a digital lockdown called Data Purge. That's the Animus explanation of what a Helix Rift is, but modern day lore stuff aside, exploring these Helix Rifts were really fun to do. These were both in Assassin's Creed Unity and Syndicate. In Unity, you were able to explore Paris at different times. My personal favourite would be the time period where the Eiffel Tower was actually constructed. Of course, we all know that Ubisoft had to somehow include the Eiffel Tower seeing as it is a game that is set in Paris, and they did do this quite perfectly. They kind of brought back these Helix Rift in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where you play as Lydia Fry throughout the events of World War 1, which just like Unity, I had a lot of fun with. I mean, we even got to play as the granddaughter of Jacob Fry. It's a mystery why they didn't make more of these types of Animus Helix style missions. Imagine with Assassin's Creed Origins, there would be Helix Rifts where we'd get to witness the pyramids whilst they're getting created. The possibilities are endless for Helix Rifts. Now this topic might stir up some debate, because the Assassin's Creed community is known to have mixed feelings towards the modern day aspect of Assassin's Creed, while when I say mixed, it often leans towards the side of not wanting it at all. But hear me out, I actually don't mind the modern day elements one bit. One of the primary reasons I got into Assassin's Creed in the first place was my fascination with Desmond Miles, who let's be honest stands at the top tier of modern day protagonists when compared to what came after him. I don't know about you, but I found the modern day in the first 5 games to be rather fun, especially in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Just having the opportunity to explore the deserted Monteregioni with Desmond felt oddly relaxing. Admittedly, there wasn't really much to do while exploring the area but it still felt enjoyable to experience. And even the narrative side of it was great. The whole Lucy and Desmond thing was one of the best modern day stuff to happen. Even in Black Flag, despite having a mute modern day protagonist and a first person perspective, I found the exploration to be quite interesting because you could read little bits of lore on other Animus machines. Oh, and don't even get me started on Syndicate's modern day. I don't even need to say anything about that. But then there's the modern day segments we have today. Frankly, I can't even begin to explain what's happening without having to do some research. It's become so convoluted and confusing. We've transitioned from Desmond to Layla, and no offence to Layla as a character, but she simply cannot hold a candle to Desmond Miles. 
With Desmond, we had a rich backstory, an emotionally compelling narrative, and a thoroughly entertaining modern day plotline. And now it's just a jumbled mess. And it's hard to invest in the modern day narrative. Of course, we already know that Assassin's Creed Mirage won't feature any playable modern day segments, which was expected. But it's what comes after Mirage that has me intrigued. Hopefully Ubisoft can recapture the magic and make the modern day aspect entertaining once more. This might be one of my most highly anticipated returns when it comes to Assassin's Creed, and that is the return of Assassin's Safe Houses. It seems like the last time we had a proper safe house was in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and I often wonder why they haven't made a comeback. Yes, we did have Ravenstorp in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but that was more of a settlement rather than a single dedicated safe house building. I can somewhat understand the reasoning behind not including safe houses in the next three games after Syndicate, especially because they shifted towards RPG elements, and having a safe house on an extremely large map might not have made perfect sense. However, I don't really agree with that decision. Just to clarify, I'm not referring to assassin bureaus. I'm talking about places like Villa Auditore in Assassin's Creed 2, the Tiba Island headquarters in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the hideout in Assassin's Creed Revelations, or the Cafe Theatre in Unity, among others. These hideouts had a unique charm as they somehow fit the time period of the game. For instance, in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the hideout was aboard a steam train. And what stood out about all these hideouts was the ability to renovate buildings, areas or shops directly from the hideout itself. And you could even earn extra money as you continue to improve them. This added another layer of depth to the game and gave us an extra goal to work towards in the game itself, which I personally found quite enjoyable. I genuinely hope that in a future Assassin's Creed game, we see the return of these Assassin's safe houses. The next feature that I would love to see return to Assassin's Creed would be the double assassinations. Now I understand 100% why we have not got double assassinations in the more recent games. It somewhat required having two hidden blades, so the time period being ancient Egypt, ancient Greece and the Viking Age of course were not with the times. Altair was of course not around during these times, so the idea of him developing double assassinations as a technique was not discovered yet. Anyway lore reasons aside, I would love to see the double assassinations come back. I believe we last seen it in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where instead of two hidden blades, either Evie or Jacob Fry stabbed the first guy and then used the hidden blade for the second guy, which personally I think looks a lot cleaner than having two hidden blades. Who knows, maybe with Assassin's Creed codename Red, we'd see the return of double assassinations seeing as the game is set after Altair's time, and it's quite ahead in terms of time period compared to Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla's. The only mechanic remotely resembling a double assassination that we've had since Syndicate is the chain assassination, where you would assassinate the first enemy and then swiftly dispatch the next one with a throwing knife or an axe. Let's be honest though, it doesn't quite capture the essence of the classic double assassination that we've grown accustomed to, so here's to hoping for the return of double assassinations in future Assassin's Creed games. The next feature that I want to talk about is one that doesn't seem to get discussed much these days. It's something that I found quite enjoyable, and that's obtaining special armour. I'm not referring to unlocking armour through challenges or discovering armour sets in the game's world. I'm talking about what we experienced with Assassin's Creed 2 with the armour of Altair under Villa Auditore, the armour of Brutus in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the medieval armour in Assassin's Creed Unity, and the Aegis outfit in Syndicate. While I wasn't particularly a fan of the Aegis outfit, it was still something I liked working towards. I enjoyed exploring the game's world, finding puzzles or keys that would eventually grant me access to an armour set waiting for me at my assassin safe house. Out of all the games that featured unlockable armour, my favourite was probably Assassin's Creed Black Flag's Templar armour. I say this not because of how the outfit looked, but because of the process involved in obtaining it. I really like tracking down the 5 Templar keys, especially because the Templar side missions that came with it were really enjoyable. I do hope in a future Assassin's Creed game, or maybe even in Assassin's Creed Mirage, we'll have the opportunity to unlock a special armour set that requires us to locate keys or solve puzzles to obtain it. I'm personally into that kind of gameplay, even though I understand that it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but do remember this entire video reflects my own personal opinion, and different players have different preferences. Here's a feature that has only made a couple of appearances in Assassin's Creed. I say only because we've only encountered this concept primarily twice. The Christina missions in Brotherhood and Bayek's promised constellation thingy in Origins. 
While Bayek's promise may not be your typical visual memory, it still delves into memories by allowing us to experience Bayek in Camus' past conversations. Additionally, we even had that one gameplay scene where Bayek, Kemu, and Kemu's friend explored together. Some might mention that the Caroline flashback in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but those were not playable. What I'm really getting at is the desire for a return of fully playable memories. I'd love to see a feature similar to the Christina missions in Brotherhood. Those missions allowed us to witness Ezio's relationship with Christina evolve through memories, and not just in cutscenes but actual gameplay. It was a fantastic addition by Ubisoft. Now imagine we had a memories feature in a game like Assassin's Creed Syndicate, where we could experience random memories involving gameplay with a younger Eevee or Jacob Fry alongside their father Ethan Fry, who does appear in Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. You see Ethan Fry for me is definitely a character that deserves a spotlight in a mainline game. Who knows, perhaps in a future Assassin's Creed game, we'll have the opportunity to explore this memories feature once more, just like we did with the Christina missions. Moving on to another feature that I'd be thrilled to see make a comeback in Assassin's Creed are the factions. I'm specifically referring to the courtesans and the mercenaries, and let's not even mention the thieves because, well, they were about as useful as an elephant in a minefield. In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you were represented by thieves, mercenaries and courtesans, and throughout the game, each group presented a unique narrative arc with a different target for you to eliminate. I found this concept to be quite intriguing because it shrouded you in mystery. You could blend into the crowd and nobody would suspect your true identity. If you look at the Assassin's Creed games now, you're pretty much tasked with just taking out an Order of the Ancient or a Templar on your own. There's no NPC help. You cannot just hire courtesans or mercenaries on the street anymore. Imagine in a future Assassin's Creed game, you had the opportunity to select a faction as your cover. You could opt to be a mercenary, a courtesan or a thief, and each choice would provide distinct advantages for carrying out assassinations. As a mercenary, you could call upon fellow mercenaries to assist you in combat situations. Courtesans could establish personal connections with targets by engaging with them intimately in their chambers, which for you would create opportunities for discreet eliminations. Thieves on the other hand, well, they could employ tactics such as poisoning food supplies, pilfering crucial evidence, or even orchestrating events that would result in the expulsion of a lord onto the streets. Am I reaching? Definitely, but who cares. Okay now this feature relates to raw gameplay, and it's a feature that, let's be real, should have never been removed in the first place. And that is parkour such as back ejects, side ejects, and even a simple manual jump button. The parkour mechanics in the earlier games, specifically the first four, offered a higher degree of sophistication. It was not just a matter of sprint to climb everything, we had to carefully plan our routes and climbs, which might have been a bit challenging for newcomers, but it did allow us to gradually learn and appreciate the freedom of movement. This was possible because, well, the animations did not constrain gameplay, and that's why we could have intricate tombs and hideouts to explore. The removal of back ejects and side ejects were completely ridiculous, and to this day, I will never understand why Ubisoft just could not let us have fun. I mean, they even confirmed it's not a thing in Assassin's Creed Mirage. You see, it's quite frustrating when Ubisoft claimed to be putting their emphasis on improving parkour, but merely accelerating an already clunky parkour system that doesn't really seem like a dedicated focus on it. You may think that with their two year development cycle, they'd realise that the RPG system does not quite fit seamlessly into an urban setting, especially when they frequently mention their inspiration from the earlier games. If you were to boot up a game like Assassin's Creed 3 for 10 minutes and then switch over to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you can immediately sense that the parkour has been completely dumbed down. It's truly baffling how a game from 2012 boasts a more intricate and fluid parkour system than one that was released quite recently. Okay now the final feature in this video that I believe needs to return is the multiplayer. Now I'm not referring to co-op, I'm talking about a pure multiplayer mode. The Assassin's Creed multiplayer made its debut in Brotherhood and it reached its conclusion in Unity. While Unity primarily featured co-op gameplay, the multiplayer that I'm referring to encompassed Brotherhood through Black Flag. The way that multiplayer used to work was where you'd need to eliminate or be eliminated by other Templars or players. In each game, you had various playable characters and maps that matched the setting of the game. There were different modes available, including a free-for-all and a team-based mode. The real excitement came from the challenge of identifying your target among a crowd of AI characters, all the while ensuring that you did not get killed yourself. This meant seamlessly blending in with the other NPCs, and you would always be aware for a slight misstep by another player. This mode skillfully focused on the stealth mechanics to make you appear as an ordinary person in the very packed crowd. 
It was a blend of tension and enjoyment and is one that in the earlier games I had a lot of fun with. Just being able to chase down a target that was trying to escape you was an absolute blast. I know it's a massive doubt but if we were ever to get another multiplayer like the ones we had previously it would seriously be amazing. I think the reason it got cancelled was that only a tiny fraction of players actually played it and the development of a multiplayer mode demanded a substantial allocation of resources, servers, designs, balance and constant efforts to address potential exploits. All that time, money and effort was poured into something that the majority of players did not even touch. So there you have it, those are 10 features that I would love to see return in Assassin's Creed. For a lot of them I'm pretty much reaching but where's the harm in just hoping for a positive change? Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.